Get in here. I'm warm. Get in here. With us for this inspection are the representative of Julius Beja, their engineer. We have the MD of CCCC and uh, their project manager in Lagos. We have uh, the China Harbor, uh, who is the contractor that is doing the deep sea port in Lagos. We have the um, uh, build well, Engineer George. Engineer George is the one that is doing our eco bridge. Uh, he's also doing the marine bridge and independence bridge. And so, uh, I will give you a background of what we have seen and we continue to see until there is a, a national intervention. First, yesterday we inspected the the top mainland bridge, you know, top deck. As you are aware, uh, there have been a lot of um, asphalt covering on top of the top mainland bridge. Some sections are like 300 mm, that's uh, 12 inches. Some sections are 4 inches on the deck. This deck was not designed to carry more than 2 inches of asphalt. So you have curated super elevation on the bridge, which is very dangerous. Uh, going forward. And let me say that these bridges have stayed over 60 years and the shelf life design of bridges, you know, uh, um, 50 years. And the, there were no maintenance as such apart from the intervention of uh, the various, uh, you know, governors of Lagos State, like when Asiwaju was here and other governors that, uh, uh, Mr. President Asiwaju and like other governors that were here. But um, the last administration also did extremely very well in their intervention. And that's why we still have a cool bridge. Uh, it is a cool bridge, Carter Bridge, and a marine bridge, top mainland bridge, that bring us in and out of the mainland of Lagos. And right now, we have closed a heavy truck on the top mainland bridge because of some reasons I will explain. Uh, nothing to worry about, you know, as such, because... We have identified the problems and we are going to tackle the problem. So we discussed that. And so the Tom Melnam Bridge, you know, uh, surfacing, we've had to do emergency work, uh, uh, two days emergency work on the Tom Melnam Bridge. But that's not the, um, what we intend to do. We intend to mill out all this undesirable coating of the Tom Melnam Bridge deck, uh, four inches to uh, 12 inches. We mill everything out, and uh, we will now clean it and then relay only two inches asphalt on top of the top mainland bridge. And I think a total length of about uh, 11 kilometers, 11.6 kilometers. So uh, we restricted tendering and the CCCC one that, and the we must to start work by 1st of uh, November. We are going to do strategic meeting with the Lagos State Government and on how we are going to manage the work. Already we have a committee which includes also the Lagos State Government officials. Now, let's start with Tom Mainland Bridge on the deck. On the deck, you know, or the bridge was built about 60 years back and it has two sections. 
the section built by the uh, Italian company, uh, then the section built by Jolobeja. We have a number of problems we have noticed. Let's start with the the uh, the piling, the piling. The piling for these bridges was under skin friction, which means that it was not designed to reach to the rock if we ever find rock. And so there are two kinds of piling, you know, skin friction where the earth or the sand is holding the pile, or you have end bearing where the rock has been reached and then is holding the pile. So we discovered that in some locations where you sand were dug out and uh, it has created a kind of uh, a very deep uh, section that the pipes are no longer, you know, effectively being held by the skin friction. So it's a very dangerous one. And uh, we are working with consultants and the, the contractors to agree on desirable method of uh, remedying this. It has a remedy. It might be expensive, but when we compare it to reconstructing the entire bridge again, then something needed to be done very quickly. Then we now come to the pie cap. We have two problems on the pie cap, but not all of them. And I'm talking about all these bridges. You now have where the pie cap cover is destroyed. It has to be reinstated. Where the itself, you know, has a problem, it has to also to be reinstated. And then you look at the pier. The pier is like columns, if it is trade buildings. And so you find out that there are some, uh, you know, uh, the, the, the covers to the gave up in a number of the piers and uh, we have uh, scoped all of them one by one we have the pictures and uh, we are going to do structural uh, scoping to remedy the situation and lastly you have the flexion the design of the bridge was uh, such that part of the slab was cantilevered and of course you should know that there were no maintainers actually uh, from the national level other than the last administration. So all that we had intervention well from the state uh, government, especially when uh, President Aswaji was uh, in office. Now we have deflection. About 20% of the slab deflected, but the other 80% not yet deflected. So what are we going to do? We are going to face it so that we remedy the ones that deflected, but it requires a lot of um, technical expertise, exactly what Buildworld is doing at Eco Bridge, uh, where we have to open the bridge deck and then retention the tendons, the pre-stressed, you know, tendron, uh, you know, steel holding the, um, you know, the slab. It's a very technical job and uh, we are going to import equipment, uh, but not so much. It costs about 1.2 million euros that we use to do that aspect of the work. Uh, where we have bearings problems, we just clean the bearings and protect the bearings. So this is all about what we have, uh, you know, checked. And uh, at Carter Bridge, we don't have deflection problem, but we have other problems uh, other than the piling problem and uh, the deck deflection. Now, ongoing jobs in the um, in Lagos by the previous administration include the Eco Bridge the Marina Bridge, the Independence Bridge. Let me say that uh, the Eco Bridge was, uh, it suffered two problems. Uh, one was the, uh, the lack of maintenance and the bearings giving up and uh, a lot of the uh, pier caps and the pie caps and uh, the piers, they had serious issues. But the last administration did very wonderful work and the um, work is ongoing may finish in 2024 because we are pushing for increase uh, uh, of uh, workers and equipment on site and are doing beautiful work. But let me say that without this eco bridge, you will not have any, you know, uh, big truck coming into Ireland or going out of Ireland. So that's the savior. But while this work was going on, people staying under the bridge, you know, selling chemicals and all kind of so then they burnt over 50% of uh, this eco bridge. And the Cold Bridge and the surrounding bridges being taken together is over 11 kilometers. And so that added to the work by the past administration. So we've taken it up uh, in the present administration. And uh, I want to thank Mr. President, uh, the National Assembly, for 
you know, looking at this uh, infrastructure strategically. Uh, Lagos remains the financial, you know, uh, capital of our nation. And uh, we have a lot and a lot of uh, national infrastructure here that is uh, part of our, you know, GDP. So we can't neglect it. Now, um, it's also doing the Marine uh, Bridge and the Independence Bridge. We've also noticed that um, the Liverpool, a dope bridge, and the number five Cowrie Bridge also need the same attention. And uh, lastly, we saw the Marina Shore Protection. Uh, it's totally gone, and so we have to give it attention because uh, the blue rail line is threatened. You know, biting on this, uh, you know, see, threatened. The road we built uh, with concrete, you know, around that marina also threatened. And so we, we need to do something about that. But before I end this uh, uh, remarks, let me congratulate, you know, Mr. President uh, very, very highly. His Excellency President Senator Bola Ahmed uh, uh, Asuaju, because he's a divine president. And I've been saying it right from the time of campaign that the president and his uh, vice president are divine, you know, gift to this country. <coughs> we need very serious intervention of these like minded people to reset the country in all sectors of our development. And so I give all the glory to God Almighty for the victory we had just last few days. And I appreciate it very highly. And uh, let me uh, remark as one of the leaders of this country that is very unethical and unprofessional for uh, opposition parties to praise the uh, uh, judiciary when they sack APC uh, elected officials, and uh, when the PDP people are sacked, they criticize the judiciary. This is unlike, you know, leadership of any country. We have to be patriotic to our country. We have to put our country first, and this is very important. And let me announce that the job that God sent President Asuaju and Vice President Shetima to do is to put the country first, and this is just what they're doing. In the past few months, they assumed office. And we have no choice than to support them. Uh, I just came from China. On Wednesday, I went straight to the office to work. And uh, yesterday, Friday, I had to come down here because of the importance of this uh, uh, infrastructure. And by Tuesday, I'm off to uh, Northwest to continue my tour of uh, the regions. And so, we leaders of this country, we have to put this country ahead of all our interests, ahead of our regions, because together you, we are stronger. So I also congratulate myself as an APC who left the ship of PDP when it was going to sink. And I think it was a, a divine revelation uh, for me and uh, all the APC members in Ebony State and the, the APC members in Southeast. And let me say that it's time for the Southeast people to give support to Mr. President. It's time for them to forget about all these rumors of uh, obedience or this and that. I knew from day one that nothing was going to happen. I knew, and I was very bold in saying that. So I want to pledge that in entire Southeast, we kill behind the PC. We could behind all our, you know, governors that are going to be elected on the 11th of November, starting with my brother, uh, His Excellency Hu Puzodemma, starting with Ododo for Kogi uh, State, and starting with uh, Siva for Bayelsa State. I want to wish Mr. President success in this pools ahead of time, and wish the governors, uh, who is go the governor that is going to be re-elected, my dear brother Hu Puzodemma, a great success and the, those who are going to be elected. APC is the party that God has sent to reset the country, take back our country, and reunite our people, that in all circumstances, we put Nigeria first. 
So thank you very much. And my team, I want to thank you. The con and uh, we also want the contractors to go on their own uh, and uh, also make observations so that when we give you our findings through our consultant, you will also, in your technical submission, make input. You can agree with us or disagree with us, and that is allowed in a proper bidding. And then where you disagree, you will note it in your commercial bidding. Where you agree, you also note in commercial bidding. But let the urgency of this work, we are not going to limit it to one or two contractors. We are going to have a number of contractors doing a particular specialized uh, work because it's an emergency work and it's very, very important. And so I'm directing my directors here to compile our findings so that we can aid it, so that Nigerians will know how serious we are to uh, restructure and remedy this uh, very critical national you know, uh, infrastructure. Uh, and the same we are doing all over the country. And so um, this were our findings. This um, needed attention. It's normal and it's allowed in design. So we are reinstating, uh, we are stopping for that deflection uh, on the ones that have deflected and the ones that have not deflected, we are going to ensure they don't deflect by the work we are going to do. So we'll be in two phases. The Top mainland bridge, yes. Uh, I didn't say we are reviewing. I say we have awarded the resurfacing of the entire, uh, you know, deck of Tom mainland bridge and uh, the approach, uh, you know, ramps, four of them. And uh, we are going to change all the lights to solar light. We are going to bring in CCTV, and uh, the CCTV will cover both the deck and uh, the under deck. So through that, we are going to monitor the movement of people, you know, under the deck and they're within the water. That's the only way we can protect. So they are going to show me a point where we can build or put caravans and then it becomes our a kind of, um, you know, our viewing point. And we're going to have some security that we immediately, you know, attend to anybody that is going to be excavating around these, uh, you know, piles. And that's the only way we can protect uh, the piles and then we stop spending further money on them. The deck is starting November. The rest of the uh, this thing is our duty to cry out to the nation, and it's the duty of Mr. President and the National Assembly to look at how serious these are and appropriate funds for it. But we must do our own duty. You know, God forbid if anything happens, nobody should blame us. But we have to also let the nation see the problems that we are having, and it's normal in any country. The what is abnormal is not to give attention to it. To do the underdeck, uh, these bridges, you know, about uh, four of them, uh, two years. The, the service, we're looking at three months, very important. And we are going to be working, you know, weekends, Saturday, Sunday. And um, if we ever work during the uh, other days, it has to be from uh, 12 midnight to 4 a.m., you know, the next day. We will not inconvenience negotiations. And I keep saying it to the Minister of Works. Uh, it's only in Nigeria when you are constructing a road or bridges, you are inconveniencing the people. The people first. And so we must take the convenience of the people first. Not just in Lagos, all over the country. If you are doing a road and the people are going to suffer, or trailers are going to be falling in front of you, then you are calling for an arrest. We want to bring the best you know, uh, uh, professional ethics in our road construction. I was in China, and some of the Chinese are here, and I asked them, I have not seen any maintenance likely on your roads, both concrete and asphalt, in the past uh, 20 years. And they said yes, because in China, when you construct a road, and the road fails in your lifetime, it will be tested to find out if there was culpability in terms of asphalt thickness, in terms of the stone base, or construction material. And if you are found guilty, you will go to jail for life. And so we are trying to introduce a lesser you know, punishment by saying all our projects going forward, we have to uh, you know, bring it up in fact and then finally to National Assembly to make it a law. So that every project will carry between 1% and 2% of the project cost. And so that contractors will not hand over any project they have done within six months or one year deferred liability period they will be responsible to maintain the infrastructure for 10 years. 
using that percentage you know, on their own. So if you know that you are going to be responsible for 10 years, from day one, you will be very serious and very careful to make sure that you build an enduring infrastructure that you will be responsible for 10 years. Do not believe the contractors that say that uh, the problem is lack of maintenance. Which roads are maintained within 10 years, you know, overseas? So why should you build a road and then the next year you want maintenance to happen on the road? We are saying no, it's very unprofessional. There is no badly constructed road that will not last for two years. And so within the two years that have existed and the roads are bad, they will now tell you it's because of uh, too much AXA load, it's because of there was no maintenance. People don't maintain roads within 15, 20 years in overseas. We want to bring that responsibility back so that on serious and quick fix contractors, we have to exit. And then we have to work with very serious contractors. First is the interest of the people. Second one is to do the work and professionally do it. And Todd Mainland Bridge is going to be one of the best bridges when we finish in the whole of Africa. So you wait and see how we are going to beautify it. Not just to uphold the integrity of the bridge, but also the aesthetics. We're going to do it. My team, we are very committed to that. And by extension, we're also going to look at the uh, protection or protective uh, infrastructure of other bridges. You know, but I wonder how people will go and begin to cut the guardrails. You know, what happens in our country, you know, uh, they don't happen in other places. People are going to remove the, the rail, track rails of, uh, you know, train. And so we have to wake up and know that the security and the strategic infrastructure you know, of our nation is the duty of uh, that, the duty of uh, all of us, you know, because no governor is going to stand by the guardrail, you know, protecting it. So we have all to do our jobs. The Tom Mainland Bridge, you know, has a number of uh, stages. The first is the deck, to restore the integrity of the deck and then put up the aesthetics of the deck. And then the second one is to look at the deflected uh, sections of the slab. The third is to look at the piers. The fourth is to look at the peer cap coverings, pie cap coverings. The fourth is to look at the bearings. The fifth is to look at the pilings under the water. So, there are a number of them that are going to be faced. Yeah.